All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is a special episode. We are over 10 episodes in at this point, and I just wanted to do something something special. Uh, I reached out to a very good friend of mine. Uh, I've known him since high school. We gra- graduated together, uh, but he is uh, a big star- Star Wars fan, so I thought we would do a little fun thing with him. So first off, uh, thank you for being here, sir. Um, uh, I understand you also have a YouTube channel, which links will be in the description for all your platforms. Uh, would you like to explain, you know, what you're thinking about your channel? Uh, yeah. Hi everybody. My name is Fez. Uh, I've got a pretty open YouTube channel, but now it's only got like two or three uploads. It's a personal channel so far. But I was also hoping to do a gaming channel where I was going to do probably some old school gaming, some, you know, older games that, you know, you might not have ever played through or didn't have time and do some playthroughs on some older games like Game Boy Color or PlayStation 2, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so uh, I'm actually looking forward to that because I actually watch a lot of... uh, Twitch streamers on some of the old school games like Streets Streets of Rage 2, uh, the old school TMNT games, uh, Metal Gear Solid. So I will be 1000% uh, looking into that. Um, and again, his links will be in the description. But I have sent uh, uh, my good buddy here, Fez, I sent him uh, about 15 questions and I wanted him to participate in this uh sort of give his input on the questions i sent him and we're just gonna have fun with this so sir i am ready whenever you are for question one let's do this what's question one question one your favorite jedi and why okay so this was a fun one to go through and really think about i had i i admit you gave me some some interesting questions Mm -hmm. my favorite jedi overall and and Technically, this is now Legends in Star Wars because when Disney bought it out, canon changed. Right. And if it don't, is no longer canon, it's called Legends. Right. So my favorite Jedi was Etain Turbrickin. Ooh, who's that? She. This was cool because she was one of those kind of unknown Jedi throughout the Clone Wars. So she starts the Clone Wars. She's on this planet while war breaks out, and she doesn't even know. There are deep in this mission that she's on. They get separated, so then it becomes a story of survival. MVD. Right. And Chief, they even mentioned that special. You're a gay gamer as much as I am. Right. There was a game for the original Xbox and the PC. It was called Republic Commando. Okay. Where it was about four man squads. And they were like, you know, best of the best. The four people would go doing, go and do where no one else would go doing what nobody else could do. They were that good. Right. It was actually quite a difficult game, and we've been begging for the sequel. You know. So, you know. Yeah. Um, and her, the way she learns about the Clone Wars is on a completely unrelated mission. The uh, Clone Trooper. Yeah. Just kind of scared, not sure what to do, just trying to survive. Right. And it's about uh, all the way through, I believe it's six, five, six books. Good, you know, good size, 400 page books. Ooh! Uh, and it, it, it really brings the story of Jim and the clones together, you know, like, part of why the betrayal was so bad. It wasn't just, you know, the same truth over and over again, like the clones. Kind of, tr- kind of things. Yeah. So, like, she, there's a whole love story that goes involved with this, and we get to really experience a lot of the Mandalorian culture as well. Like, book two actually has a glossary that tells us to the Mandalorian wish. Right. And so it, it's cool how her, her 
first story and like the story of these clones specifically because it's about this four-man squad personal they act are including the fact that they're clones you know how different these these four men are even though they are literally, literally the same mm -hmm. and about how deep the the relationship between the jedi and the clones really could be and where it even goes through order 66 and into the empire so how devastating that really was for the galaxy as well as personal right very just not to light how great that was all the descriptions i've read about her she was also really pretty and so you know, i pictured this really gorgeous woman doing all this and that just made it a way better too <laughs> The book series is called uh, Star Wars Republic Commando. Perfect. Perfect. I will, um, yeah, like I stated, like I stated before, uh, you know, this game has made me look into the lore of a lot of stuff. Now, granted, like I stated at the very beginning of this series, I am a noob when it comes to Star Wars. So uh, I went on YouTube and looked up, you know, the backstories to a lot of uh, Jet J Jedi and, um, the only one I looked up was uh, Quan Jin, and that was oh, yeah. yes. And then that led to um, an the reason why Anakin invaded the Council and killed all the younglings. So yeah. that really uh, reached out to me. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna ch check out the series. I know I set the cha the challenge to, uh, if a certain episode got 50 plus likes, then I was gonna check out that episode in uh the game in the movie series so i'm probably gonna check it out uh no matter what happens but uh, um yeah so uh question two your favorite sith and why okay so this was another one where i had to think about this for a little while because okay. as you said i've been in star into star wars for as long as either of us can remember right um, and that was before they even did the prequels. So, I mean, to me, Star Wars was the original trilogy. Yeah. Um, I know there are some people that remember Star Wars as just the one movie, but to me it was three movies because I'm not quite that old. But <laughs> my favorite Sith, uh, I had to think about it, and also from a book series, uh, was Darth Bane. Okay. And he, he, sir, he lived a thousand years before the Republic that we know, so before the, the Clone Wars, as you uh, uh, read in the a thousand years before he died, this guy was part of the Sith, Sith Order. Okay. Um, what was really cool was he, he uh, started basically the modern Sith as we know them with the rule of two. Where there is always just a master and just an apprentice. Right. So, like, if you think of the Jedi Order, there was the master and the apprentice, but there were, you know, hundreds and thousands of them all over the place. Right. You know, the whole Jedi Temple, and there are all these Jedi with all these apprentices. And then, without it, the Sith Lord, literally all the Sith had been fighting themselves, you know, amongst themselves at one point, during a war with the Jedi a thousand years prior to that. And because of that infighting, they weakened themselves, and the Jedi won the war. Bane was the only one who survived from the original Sith Order and decided he was going to re redo it, but there was only going to be him and his apprentice. Right. And because of that, he swore, you know, that he was going to, you know, Bane, he was swore vengeance upon the Jedi. Right. He put into motion... Seth, or Chief Palpatine, actually did over 66. Okay. So the whole the whole idea of hiding in the shadows, waiting for the right moment, getting the Jedi to be really weak, and then destroying all of them was really set into motion a thousand years prior to that by Darth Bane. Okay. Plus, in the book series, he also uh, creates a holocron and bonds this really cool armor. So it was just a really, you know, just fun, fun 
fun thing to, to learn and to read about while we were there. Okay. Perfect. Um... Now, I stated that, you know, I, I checked out uh, the whole thing about him invading the, the council and the back, and I saw a video called The Ten Cool Facts of An An Anakin, and that got me thinking. Um, now, this person had stated within the video that since a young kid, uh, his biggest uh, weakness or strength was his vis visions, and that was like the ultimate demise of him when he grew up um so that led me to ask you for question three are you sympathetic to An anakin's situation and what led him to being darth vader well that's a, that's a good question because that was one that i also had to kind of toss back and forth in my head because when i first you know watched star wars and as the prequels came around and I was not sympathetic to Anakin, but as I've grown up and, you know, had my own life happen to me. Yeah. I'm going to say, I'm going to say yes. For the majority of what he does, I, I would have to say I'm sympathetic. Um, because they even say right up until Anakin was discovered by the Jedi, he was a slave. So, yes. I mean, he yes. never had any choices of his own. You know, right. Or very, very few. Right. Uh, and because he was... You know, he never had a father. He was kind of a child of the Force. He was very strong with the Force, so he would see visions that he didn't understand. Mm -hmm. Or uh, if you get really deep into lore, sometimes visions that he was meant to see, not necessarily the right ones, but, you know. Right. Like somebody else manipulating the Force was have, causing him to, you know, have these visions and things like that. And. So, as a kid, getting some of these is just dreams with even in reflexes. You know, he would naturally kind of just learn to act on an impulse, which he did, which was kind of a flaw of his. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, he, he meets his future wife and then gets freedom. So, you know, he's going to kind of idolize her as well, even if he doesn't quite realize it. Right that you know part all her character definitely did that as well mm -hmm. um, which is also going to help him act on impulse right because he act, he acted on an impulse to just help and that was a good thing and then you know he just kind of fell into his own his own problems mm -hmm. um, there were some where I'm sympathetic to him because I would probably do the same thing right but that doesn't make it the best choice either. I mean, because he, he, he then be, chooses to become a Jedi where a lot of decisions are made for him. Yeah. So in a, this creature. in a kind of twisted way, he kind of sells himself back into a kind of slavery. Right. So I did kind of feel sorry for him. And especially because he's not the only, only Jedi to fall in love. And he wouldn't be the first Jedi to leave the order, as it were. Right. Um, his master, Obi-Wan, at one point... Uh, when he was a when he was an apprentice, actually left the order for a year to uh, join the. He, he didn't leave the order, but he uh, went to a different part of the Jedi Order to be part of the agricultural section, where he could basically just go and help build farms and not have to worry about like you know modern Jedi problems. Right. He did that for a year because he had fallen in love with a friend of his who was also a Jedi. Right. And then he came back. And the two of them never really got together because they kind of grew up and realized it was a good idea. Anakin never had that. But it made it more sympathetic when even Obi-Wan could, could fall in love. And if that could happen, then, you know, yeah. Anakin didn't be any better. <laughs> right, right, right. And because he was supposed to be the one to bring balance to the Force, there was pressure on him the whole time. Everybody was expecting him to be so great. Yeah, because he was the chosen one. Yeah, he was the one that was going to bring the Force back into balance. Yeah, and that's a major, you know, to have that monk monkey right on your back is something you really don't want to wish upon somebody. No, because everything he's going to be doing is under scrutiny. Right. By everybody. Yeah. 
Um. Here we go again. Uh, so you know, you saying that uh, you don't, you don't uh, blame him as you grew up and you experienced life yourself. That leads us perfectly into uh, question four. What side would you realistically pick? Well, again, thinking about it realistically, I'd be on the dark side. Uh, as much as I want to say that I would be, a, you know, a good, good boy Jedi. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be. I would almost no doubt do... Maybe not exactly what he did, but ready, something BD. very similar. Right, right. I would totally do that, because, uh, you know, I'm just thinking, I'm in space traffic, and somebody cuts me off, I can use force <laughs> choke on them. Yeah. I mean, I, I, think, I think about it when I'm in normal traffic, I'm like, man, if I could force choke them over here, I might, you know. <laughs> I would <laughs> so, so... I would force... Power, right. <laughs> you are driving... You're driving, you get cut, cut, cut off, and then you, and then and you stop, and you're like, I would force choke the shit out of you so hard, you have no idea. You are blessed that you're driving away. Yeah, and then, that normal traffic, can you imagine giving me a lightsaber and, oh, you know, Jesus. all these cool powers? Yeah, and, uh, oh. It's like one of the, it's like that question of being a superhero, what would you do with your powers? Not good. Right. But I'd want to do good, but I would end up doing bad. Um... Now, I know a lot of people, you know, they say the colors don't matter, they don't care about the meanings, and some Star Wars, well, not, not some Star Wars, all Star Wars fans are like, listen, th th there's a reason that there is a color to a lightsaber and everything. Um, so, uh, if that is you that believes the colors mean something and everything, uh, then uh, question five, what color would you wield and why? This is one I had some trouble thinking about. I sat for a good half an hour when you sent me this question. Because if I got to choose my color, yeah, um, some some parts of uh, fandom say that they do, some don't. It, you know, This is one of those we can argue canon forever. Right. Uh, and I was thinking about it because uh, I, thought, I thought it would always be cool um, if they'd had, like, Instead of it being a permanent color, your uh, your lightsaber blade was like a mood ring. Ooh, okay, that's so, pretty cool. So if your lightsaber's activated and you're sitting there staring down your opponent, and you start feeling angry and you know all these dark feelings, your lightsaber would kind of turn more towards the red side, which you know everybody in Star Wars knows is the dark evil side. side. Yep, yep. As it would be. But how cool would it be, you know, if if kind of could calm down and collect yourself and watch it switch back to another color on more of a neutral or a uh or a good side so you you could literally have all colors you know based literally it'd be kind of like a mood ring i thought i always thought that would be kind of cool kind of hard to do on the film aspect of it right but would be really cool to do um so i was tr trying to come up with different colors because I, I realized, you know, that what color I'd want would really depend on, like, how my day's going. Right. How my mood is. You know, so, like, if you ask me this question tomorrow on my lunch break, as it would be, my mood would be completely different than it is sitting here chatting with you now. Right. <laughs> and So, that's where I come up with it. And I, I was thinking it would be kind of cool to have one that was white or even magenta, because we don't really see either of those colors really anywhere in canon. Right. So if I had to choose, probably a color like that. But I'm I'm gonna stick with my mood ring thing. There you go. Perfect. Um, yeah. Uh, so this is all, all, all about your choices and your opinions. So you know, if you feel, because I know a lot of p people say canon's the only way to go and then some people say the books matter which in like the marvel films the dc the the dc the dc films the the books matter material ma matters but some people don't do it so when you're doing these uh i just hope you answer them how you feel and that way we both can have fun with this um yep. so then um just really quickly, the base, uh, episode six, what do the colors mean? 
because I know there once was black lightsaber, there's white lightsabers. Um, yeah, so the base setting, so that way we don't go into a 20-minute rants about this, because I know a lot of Ken, a lot of fans can, uh, but within a base setting, how would you answer what the colors mean? Okay, well, as you said, we could go on forever about what they mean, what the colors are, you know, yep. and, and all that, and I I don't understand exactly what you say about certain people and parts of the fandom. It doesn't matter what side of the argument you're on, you're talking to a wall yep. at some point whether the books count or not. I'm going to go with my original interpretation of them. Okay. And it was pretty it was it was pretty basic. I know it means a lot more now and since Disney's taken over and they started changing things based on how I learned them. Yep. So I'm going to go with how I learned them. Okay. But you're right, they all they all do mean something different. Yeah. Um and I'm going to start with the color of gold. Some will say orange and yellow are two different. Yes, but I'm just going to go with gold for this one because I'm going to go with some more basic answers. Okay. Um, the first time I was introduced to a gold lightsaber, it meant literally force neutral. Okay. Um, it, it would mean somewhere along the definition of being a gray Jedi, which means you aren't really stuck to the code of the Jedi. You know, you're, you're, you you uphold the principles of the Jedi, but don't necessarily follow the rules. Qui-Gon Jinn is a perfect example of a gray Jedi. Okay. Because he doesn't follow all the rules, he, but he's, you know, still on the, the good side. He just doesn't... I, like, a gray Jedi is kind of, I would say, more of a natural being. Okay. Because if you think of the Jedi that are all good, well, that can't actually be true. Correct. So you're going to have somewhere, some people in the middle. That's the yeah. To their village. Um, and the first time I really saw that happen Still, was the Jedi Temple Guards, who were their own branch of the Jedi Order, and all they were there to do was really basically be something similar to police of Jedi. Mm-hmm. You know, they, were, they were neutral. Both in their force powers and their connection to the force, they didn't really, they didn't really do like missions in the way we see Jedi. They just, you know, right. A lot of them were what would become the uh, Inquisitors later on. Yes. In canon, that's that's how that would work. Um, the next one is green, which is supposed to be a deep connection with more of the light side of the force. So where Qui-Gon also had a green lightsaber. He was connected to the light yeah, side. He just had a lot of dark feelings in him, now. which is where he didn't follow the rules. Yeah. Yoda would be a great example of just pure good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There was really no... You, you weren't even really going to tempt that guy to the dark side. Right, no, I there mean, was... He, he was 100% light side, never using the dark side. Never. Right. Uh, so that's the green's a little more straightforward because it's just so direct. You're the good guy. Mm hmm. Um, and the red. Right, um, Seth, yeah. Has, has several different answers. Obviously, that was going to be the, the bad guys. And that was really to stand out because the red looks so cool against Darth Vader's black outfit. That oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, how, that's how that really works. <laughs> um, but. It, it was really more to be on the dark side, to be kind of evil. Um, in the newer canon, you have to actually, like, corrupt the kyber crystal and make it red. Okay. So you have to go kind out of, of your way to make it red. Yeah, you have to, you have to go out of your way, because um, basically when you get the crystal, it kind of chooses... Kind of like a Harry Potter thing where the wand chooses the wizard. Yeah. The... The Kyber Crystal kind of fuses with the Jedi in current canon, and that is what helps fix the color. Okay. Because it's your connection to the Force that, that does this. Originally, it was just kind of, you pick up, you, you, you go pick up a crystal, build your lightsaber, and whatever color it happened to be was the color of the crystal you picked up, you know? Yeah. Now there's meanings to it. Um, and it, the original used to be that uh, the Sith were 
had to use red because red wasn't a natural color of kyber crystals. So they were using synthetic crystals, and that's why they were red oh. originally. Not so much in canon anymore, but I always thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, and of course, um, you see it in games all the time of somebody having a cracked crystal, which gives the lightsaber blade this kind of cool... Uh, Kylo Ren had a cracked nice crystal. Where, where his, his blade is not smooth, it's very jagged looking, even though it's made of light. Yeah. But that was supposed to be having a cracked crystal. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. I did not know that. Yeah. Um, and that, that, of course, is... The cracked crystal is, I believe, is still canon, but, you know, the whole uh, synthetic thing is no longer officially canon. But yeah. I always thought it was kind of cool and wish they'd kept that. Yeah. Um and I'm not trying to annoy anybody in the fandom. I'm just oh. kind of old school. No, no, this is this. We we both agree that this is straight your opinion, and it's not oh, your. Yeah. yeah, you're not. So so whoever is a fan of mine, that is a fan of Star Star Wars. I've known this man for so long that I just said, dude, just have fun with this. Your opinions, and I know no matter what the DC fandom, the Marvel fandom, John Wick fan fandom, no matter what you say, yeah, no matter what you say, people are gonna have a problem with. Um, yeah. so then so, uh, the blue lightsaber yes. was kind of a kind of similar to gold and like a neutral. Okay. So it, it basically it used to be more like the Padawans had that, but it, it really was kind of the other other side of neutral. Like you didn't have an opinion. Okay. It was more like you hadn't. Uh, you hadn't decided yet. That actually makes sense. You know, That's actually pretty cool. Like gold, you you were decidedly neutral. As blue, you were undecided. Period. You know, the the crystal could go either way. Yeah. And then the final color I can think of is purple, which was Maze Windu's color, and that was really because Samuel Jackson wanted to stand out on. I that. heard that. I heard that. That was going to be my question to you: was is that real or is that just you know a fan theory? Well, it is. It is real. I mean, purple is a real color. Right. It, I don't actually know what the theory on that is, but I know that the reason Maze Windu has a purple lightsaber is when he agreed to do Star Wars. He wanted his lightsaber color to stand out on screen. That's pretty cool. So that was all Samuel Jackson. Cool. <laughs> That's why purple exists. Motherfucker. That's pretty cool. <laughs> right? Um. So then question seven. Um. I want you to think of this as, uh, you know, a main fight card. Like, like all this. Like, if you could not die and just go, like, at least one hour with any Jedi, a Sith, um, a Sith Master, a Jedi Master, a Jedi Knight, whoever it is, who would you love to fight? Uh, okay. See, this this question, uh, I had to think about for a little while, because um, the first the first time I, you asked me this question, it was, who would you love to fight if you couldn't die? Yes. And my initial answer was going to be Boba Fett, because, you know, everybody in the fandom, come on, you know. <laughs> right. You know. <laughs> but then I thought about it, and said, you know, I, I bet he's going to want to stick with the Jedi thing on this, which, you know, you did. Okay. And I really had to think about it for a long time, and I decided Yoda. Ooh. I know, I, I was trying to think of somebody who wasn't directly mainstream Star Wars, but then I said, no, Yoda. Yeah, that would, yeah. Yoda's one of the best of the best, because Palpatine is, uh, right, they to be the brothers. most powerful Sith Lord that's, you know, ever come to. Right. And we we do see uh, a fight between him and Yoda in one of the movies. Mm -hmm. And the two held themselves to be pretty pretty well balanced. Um, some people will say that counted as a loss, but it counted as a loss for both of them because neither of them really won. They both lived. Right. And if you're going to fight like that, it's to the death. Yeah, so, yep, yep, yep. Um, it's... The fact that Yoda could not only be like 800 something years old and fight this guy uh but do it so well to maintain the fight and I said, you know i'd like to just hash at it with yoda for as long as i could if i can't die this could go on for a while yeah but it would be a good test of my skills at that point both with the force as well as with a lightsaber 
Right. Because in a fight that big, you're using everything you've got. Yes. And if I could hold my own with Yoda for an hour, I must be pretty good. Yeah, that, oh, that, that yeah, that, that actually would be pretty cool to think of it like, um, think of it like, uh, the show Spart Spart Spartacus, how it showed that there's more than just the arena, there's also the dungeons and shit like that, um, yeah, so, that's a great show, yes, I recommend anybody that has not watched that, watch it, watch I, it with your kids, I have, watch it. I have all three seasons, uh, on my phone, and, you know, when I'm working and bored, I will listen to every episode, uh, but, it's, it's fun to listen to those guys talk, yes, yes, um, so then, anyway. so then, um, we're going to venture on to question eight. You said there's a difference. There's one that you would love to take, uh, take by your side to fight and one to take by your side to be your wife. So I just got to ask it. Who would you rather wife up? Leia, Leia or Padme? Okay. Uh, this was a kind of difficult question because while the two of them are very different, they're also very very alike. Okay. Um, and the fact that they're both strong women, which they are. Yep. Um, they both are beautiful in their own way physically. Yep. Uh, they both are, you know, come from, you know, were raised to be kind of a hierarchy of, of the world they're from because, you know, former queen of Naboo, Princess Leia, mm -hmm. you know, they both kind of have some power behind who they are and where they come from, even though the Leia wasn't actually really part of that family. Right. But, uh, both seem to be pretty good with a blaster when it's important. Okay. So, I mean, I mean, the two are very similar, but, you know, for every argument you can make that they're similar, you can make that they're different. Um, right. And you said, when it comes down to who would I wipe, I'd have to go Padme. Okay. Uh, some of the older fandom, including my older self, would probably be mad at me for that. But <laughs> I just thought Padme was way prettier than yeah. uh, Princess Leia was. But, but Leia did almost win when she had to wear the bikini. That was kind of nice. I mean, they, they, I, I mean, you know, I have three friends that I game with that, you know, whenever we bring up Leia, it's always Slave Leia. So it seems like that's like the, the go-to, like... Style uh, for Slave Leia is that's almost like a third question. Um, so uh, so speaking of the woman that you would wi wife up, that leads us to question nine. Like I mentioned okay. again and again, uh, I watched the video about you know the reasons why he went and uh, he invaded the council. And uh, he killed all the younglings. Uh, now, I watched the clip, and it, it didn't show him killing the younglings, but it was um, it was insinuated that that, that is what hap happened. So, right. um, so my question uh, for Nine is, although you didn't see it, now we know we don't like it when kids, when, when kids get hurt in movies, but when you right. w watched it at first, what was your, like, like instinct, like, thought when that happened well my first my first initial thought was well that's just fucking stupid uh was my first thought right because he he walks into the council chamber and the kid says what are we gonna do and he gives him this weird look and then activates his lightsaber and like yeah well, that's stupid don't don't kill these kids because these are literally young impressionable children who are asking you as the uh, Jedi Knight and the adult what to do. Yeah, and... You're not gonna instantly use that. Right, and the I'm clip... I'm not condoning, you know, any of what this is about to become. Right. But, come on, you, you basically have a whole small little army of minions. Yep. Who you could then turn to the dark side and turn into, like, Sith assassins. And, Ooh. Because the rule of two is a master and apprentice. Having a Sith assassin actually doesn't count throughout that. I didn't so, like, think Don of it Paul like that. In the in the movies, was actually a Sith assassin, not actually a Sith apprentice. I mean, he was apprentice to a Sith, but he was actually a Sith assassin. Right. So, and and that being said, that that was before the whole Inquisitor thing. So, so there you go. You could 
now that the Inquisitors are, are there. Trespasser. Look, you already have partially trained Inquisitors. I mean, that's like the next gener excuse me, the next generation of Inquisitors. Right. And you just kill them all. Hmm. And then, you know, we see it in games all the time. Uh, we gotta we gotta beat the Empire to find I believe it's this in this game too. Find this list of four sensitive children. Yes, yes. I believe what's going on. Well, why? The Emperor obviously doesn't give a shit about four, <laughs> four sensitive children. He had Anakin kill right. 30 or 40 of these perfectly good kids. So unless the Emperor is literally out to kill children, which makes him way more evil than even I thought. Yeah. Or <laughs> he's going to use them. I grow tired mm -hmm. And if you wanted to use them, why didn't you just use what you had? This intruder must right. be dealt with. It just seemed like a really stupid move. And later on, uh, when we... It gets confirmed that he did kill them. And that really just kind of was like, that was like his final, one of his final nails in the coffin of the dark side. Yeah. So. I mean, yeah, I, I mean. Thought it was, I thought it was just stupid, you know, even on paper. And then it kind of just really helped seal his fate. Yeah. Um. So. So, with that being said, uh, you, uh, with you speaking of the younglings being very impressionable, which, which, which they very much are, they're kids, um, if this was true and you were a young, and you were one, one, one of them, and you survived all this, you know, and all that, who would you want to be your master? I choose would also survive the order 66. Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, that one I had to think about, and I, I actually had to uh, go. I know the book series I was thinking of. I had to go back and make sure I looked up her name right. Right. It's uh, Sora Antana. Okay. Uh, she uh, was actually a lightsaber instructor. Okay. For uh, a good 10 years or so. At the request of the Jedi Council, she became a lightsaber instructor before she actually took on a Padawan. Okay. Um, and she was actually so good that Anakin, in his training, had very easily su surpassed a lot of his fellow Padawans in lightsaber skills. Yeah. Because, you know, he'd been doing all this, his yeah, reflexes were already trained so course, well from his work as a slave, that. or his life as a slave. Right. And so even he was kind of impressed by, and you know, Anakin was an arrogant young kid. Yeah. And that that didn't help a lot of people like him. I'm coming out of a night brother now. As fans and in in this storyline as well. Oh, he was kind of hard to like. She she you know she kind of had a special respect from Anakin because. She was that good. Yeah. Um, even Yoda held her as one of the generation of her time. Okay. Uh, only had one apprentice, one Padawan, whose name was Darth Aldanis. Okay. Who was about Anakin's age, so she, she was a friend of Anakin's. Uh, in between episode one and two, and up here. Her master, Sora, was, I, I don't know, I always liked her because she's, I guess because she's kind of like me. She was always very blunt, like to the point, I mean, you know me, you yep. ask me a question and you're going to get the answer. You right. You not want the answer, but you're going to get it. <laughs> yep. You know, you might not like the answer, but you asked, so she's yeah. very blunt, but she's also very, very kind and very supportive of her, of her Padawan. Okay. Who had, who had a huge heart. Yeah. Which, uh, when that book series came to an end, was really just kind of tragic. And that that book series, while that was really geared more towards like a a younger audience, you know, like thirteen, fourteen, you know, the when the books are only like a hundred pages long, mm -hmm. it was still a really good book series. And that was called Jedi Quest. Okay. But you know, like I said, the stories are a little a little simpler because that's supposed to be more of a you know teenage series. Yeah. Um, 
So then we will actually skip all the way down to question 13. Um, okay. uh, we'll venture back if we have time. Uh, but question uh, 13. If you were to make a team of four Jedi to defeat Darth Vader, who would you recruit? Okay, that one took me some thinking on too. Because at, at a certain point, who didn't fight Darth Vader? But, right. Uh, my first, my first choice would be Obi Wan. Okay. Um, I wonder if the Knight Brothers got him. If one was Anakin's master, he kind of Anakin's style, you know. Kind of knows how to get into his head a little bit, you know. Yeah. Kind of, kind of like a family thing. If if there's anybody you know how to piss off, it's your family. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh yeah. Kind of like that. Is what I was thinking, you know, something like that. Somebody who knows him, somebody who could distract him. And as Anakin uh, has turned to the dark side, he's really not happy with Obi Wan, so his, he's going to be really focused on his anger there. Which yeah, would also be good because it would give the other three, you know, a good chance at a shot on him. Yeah. And that leads me to number two, which was Kyle Katarn. Okay. Uh, who, who, uh, some of my old school gamers out there might know who he is he was um this must be the team he was part of luke's new jedi order okay after uh episode six kind of kind of about with the way they did the last three movies in the trilogy right or in the saga um but he used to be a former stormtrooper and he he kind of uh realized he he had force potential and his father was an ex-Jedi, and he used his father's lightsaber and joined the New Order. Right. So he had a really cool backstory, and he and Luke became really good friends. And he, he also became an instructor at Luke's Jedi Academy, and I said, so as an instructor, that me that would mean he's actually very good with a lightsaber. So, you know, that would be a good good choice. Plus, he was fun, and, you know, he had a beard. Yeah. You know, always fear the beard. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, number three was Mace Windu, and I'm not really a big fan of Mace Windu, not because of Samuel L. Jackson's in everything, and it has actually started to get old, right? which it has, but uh, part of Mace Windu's fighting style is that he uses a, a fighting style that is very uncommon and very dangerous in the fact that it actually embraces the use of the dark side, oh. so... Okay. If you think of most martial arts, it's not actually about having the strength over your opponent. It's using your opponent's strength. Yes, against yes, them. yes. Jitsu one hundred one. That's kind of. Yeah, that that's basically how Mace Windu's fighting style works. Is he he lets the anger of the opponent kind of channel through him and back at them. Right. And I, I said, now Darth Vader, who is a very angry person all the way around, mm -hmm. and. It has become canon that Darth Vader's suit actually keeps him in pain to keep him angry. Ooh, I didn't know uh, that. Who better, to, who better to help channel that than the guy who's anger against him? Yeah. And uh, my fourth my fourth answer to that would be uh, Barden Jessic, okay. who was also a character in the uh, Clone Wars uh, Republic Commando book series. He was a uh, he was a Jedi, a Jedi Knight who also uh, became deeply attached to his clones and all that. And he, he actually leaves the Jedi Order and uses Order 66 to completely disappear. And he actually joins yeah, and becomes anytime. Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. That's pretty so, cool. I mean, I need a second. Mandalorian with a lightsaber. Oh. Okay, Darth Vader is probably toast. You know? <laughs> So it's like between the four of them, I'm pretty sure Vader's going down. Right. Um. So then that leads to question fourteen: If you were to recruit recruit four Sith to ins ensure that your invasion on any planet would be successful, who would you recruit? Okay. Well, Darth Vader, because you know. Yeah. Right. Right. He is Darth Vader. We 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 really can't argue with how awesome he is as a character. Right. Uh, all the way through, in, in almost every That's version that you see of him, he's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, 
Number yes, two would be Darth Revan. Uh, Darth Revan's a hard character to get into because he is so all over the place in Legends in a good way that he needs his own like hour video. I go ahead, look him up. Okay. I'm gonna save us some time on that and just everybody who's listening, look up Darth Revan. He was one of the people that um, actually was on the light side, turned to the dark side, turned back. I mean out of his own will right. he could switch sides he was that good and that powerful now if he wants to take over a planet he probably can right um number three on that list is uh Darth Plagueis um who was the direct master of Chief Palpatine um, mm-hmm. who some places in in the story of Darth Plagueis he could get the midi midi chlorians to save people from dying and also create life. And there's a there's a fan theory out there that's not exactly canon, but I kind of like it. It's not like a solid good theory. It's just one of those kind of works. You can easily poke holes in it, though. Yeah. Was that he got the midi chlorians of the Force to basically create Anakin Skywalker. Okay. And that's how Shimmy Skywalker just was pregnant one day. And how Anakin could basically be Jesus in Star Wars. Huh. Um, and then Palpatine learned all he could and then killed him in his sleep. Because, you know, that's the problem with power. Once you have it, the only thing that is ever going to happen with it is you're going to lose it. Right, Which right. is part of the problem in the Sith overall. Oh, and my fourth would be Jack, Darth Bane because, <laughs> you know, he survived a war the you know, killed thousands on a planet all by himself. Right. So, and he was pretty. He was pretty badass. Okay. And his book series is called. It's a trilogy. It's called the Darth Bane trilogy, and it's a really good story too. A little harder of a read, but a good story. Yeah. We will begin with physical preparation. First, though, so then, so that was your four, correct? Yep, that was my point. Okay, so Okay. So then uh we'll skip straight down to the the to uh the last question. Um on a scale of one to ten, did you enjoy this game when you played it? Um this game itself, on a scale of one to ten, is ten ten's being the best? Yes. Okay. I gave it a six and a half to a seven. Okay. Uh, it was not the worst but video game I've ever played. Uh, Use the maintenance halls. But I found the story of weak. Okay. And it didn't really feel like Star Wars to me. I will create a okay. I mean, it, it did. I mean, it was clearly Star Wars. It just didn't. I will find. Didn't feel it. Right. It didn't give you the same feeling that the movies gave you. The movies and, and so many other games too. Right. Any cross I just, do not it, it just did not sit home with me. I, my friend got it when it came out. He beat it. Be with you. And I think I borrowed it uh, last, Go. I don't know, December. Go. And I played the first couple, like, hour of it. Go, so stop. basically, right up until you, Cal gets saved by Cersei and Greaves and all of that. Yeah. Yeah. I basically, right up until there, and you land on the planet. Uh, for the first the time, going to the first temple. Yep. That was I played like right up until there, and I left it alone until like July. Okay. And I finally got around to playing it, and it it just never the the Star Wars feeling wasn't quite there, and I, 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 the gameplay itself, uh, as you and I have discussed previously. What's going on? I wish they play tested that game before it was released. Yeah. Because uh, there was, there were some serious control yeah, issues with it, one. and you could tell it was made by EA Games because of the way you slide her around on things. Yep. Um, that, they've been doing that to us for 30 years, and we're really annoyed with it. 30 years later too. It was annoying then, and it's annoying now. Um, but I I heard a rumor that that game was originally going to be something else. Okay. And then they just kind of gave it a Star Wars theme. And knowing that, I felt that for sure. But it wasn't a bad game. Right. I, I, I'm glad that we finally got another Star Wars game. I just hope Report the next one will be better. 
Yeah, like I was telling you, you know, my biggest thing is the loading screen. I feel like it was like, it should not have taken, like, you've known me for a long time that, you know, I'm not very patient. So, you know, going through a boss fight just to die and to sit there for like five minutes and wait for it, 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 it just fucking blows my mind that that was able to happen. Um, yeah. and then again, the parry, was annoying as hell. yep. Yeah. And then like I was telling you, the parry, sim the parry system, you yeah. tap it way too quickly. You get punished for it. And I don't know. I, at the end of every game that I play, I give it a scale of one to 10 and I'm not gonna lie to you yeah. as of right now, it's not done yet, but I'm, I'm going to give it like a seven and a half. Um, I was, okay. I was going to give it an eight, but because of the fact that, um, you know, the loading screens and all that, and <clears throat> I'm a big fan of the comics and everything. So, you know, when you played the Arkham series, you felt like Batman. When you played, when you played the, uh, PS4 Spider-Man game, you felt like Spider-Man. Yeah. This, this didn't make yeah. me feel like a Jedi. No, it didn't. Especially, and, and. I'm not really here to, to bash the game. Right. But, like I said, Cal just seems kind of like a whip. Right. And as you go through and remember these most basic force concepts, it's like, how did you forget that? Right, right. How did you forget how to force jump? Yeah. You know, I mean, did you, oh, did you forget how to breathe using the force too? <laughs> right. It just, uh, he seemed like such a whip. Mm -hmm. And and later on, uh, just the whole story. It, it, my friend, when he got it, he was all excited because I needed to play it, and it, it was a brand new Star Wars Star Wars story that had never been done. I played it and said, I think I read this book ten years ago. Right. Kind of a thing. The story didn't seem new, and like you said, it didn't make me want to be a Jedi. It just right. kind of made me want to get to the next level so the credits could roll. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and as a fan of Star Wars and games, I was not impressed with this one. Right. And as an old school gamer, because um, I'm also a big fan of Assassin's Creed, so... Yep. The old school Assassin's Creed, you, you basically 100% completed the game because you had to. Right. You know, you didn't... You had to get all the viewpoints. And so with this, since there are very few real collectibles all the way through it's like a couple parts for your lightsaber the lightsaber colors yep the odd changing of your jacket or your vest for whatever reason the painting of the ship and the color of the droid yep it shouldn't be that hard to go through and collect everything right but upon my doing so and i don't mean to spoil this for you but i had to almost play the game twice right right like, I, I go through and I beat this, and then all of a sudden I couldn't get this one lightsaber color in this one area because I didn't have this force skill yet. Yep. Which they won't give me till like, the very end of the game that I have to go back through and run through each level again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just to do this for 100%. It, it just, that... Yeah. Yeah, I... It just left this bad taste in my mouth, but... I don't, I don't want that to, to detract you. No, from Star Wars. no, no. Star Wars is really good. This is just not their best work. Um, so we're actually going to end it with this one last question. What was okay. your favorite Star Wars movie that you truly loved? Uh, this this one was probably the hardest one that I that you asked me because I had to keep I had to do my best to in the span of a couple hours try to rewatch each movie in my head. Right. Um, and I'm gonna go with my favorite was probably Return of the Jedi. Okay. Just overall, Episode Six, um, because well, one it had Slave Leia since we brought her up. That was that movie. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> we all enjoyed that. <laughs> that helped. But uh, it also gave 
a good closing arc to so many characters, so many stories, um, that we got further backstory later on, and we see what happens to them later, but that movie ends everything to a point where this is over, we don't have to continue. Uh, we will continue, but we don't have to, it's well done. It ends, there we go, the galaxy is safe. Um, People will argue that was similar to uh, episode four, where they blow up the Death Star and look, the galaxy is safe. Well, true, but now it's over. Everybody who is supposed to be dead is dead. Everybody who's alive is alive. You know, it's overall good ending. Yeah. Let fear break your connection to the. I'm dead. And, I, and I, yeah! I, I just don't. I really just leave episode four alone because. That started it all, so that's got its own special place on the shelf. Yep. Everything else is. Oh, we, perfect um yeah so we are actually you reaching the end no of the video so once again i would like to thank you for coming out and doing this with me uh his links will be in the yeah. description below and um sir i will uh keep in touch with you and um hopefully we do this uh again soon sure but and, before i let you go i have a question for you mm -hmm. for everybody Yeah, so we'll we'll leave it with that. Leave it in the description below, guys. Uh, leave it in the comments how you would watch it, uh, and we'll see you yeah, in the next let time. Us know.